So have you heard the news? The star in trouble away. Have you heard they say the tomb is empty? King Jesus is a risen once for us each other day. When the women came and the three got they saw an angel standing at the end of the grave. He is not here, the angel said, Jesus is a risen from the dead. Hallelujah, hallelujah, sing song of Let us pray. Alleluia, you are risen, Lord God, and your sacrifice on the cross has traveled over space and time. May we never forget your pursuit of loving relationship and your fight for justice in this world. Amen. So again, happy Easter. This is truly the day that the Christian movement is all about. The holiest of all days in, in the Christian calendar. And what a day to celebrate and be glad, really. We were made whole again because of what Christ has done for us. We are lifted from our burden to save ourselves from ourselves and have been granted forgiveness and freedom to see that we are loved and we are worth dying for. We no longer need to prove our worth, thank God. We no longer have to believe that we need to earn our place in heaven, again, thank God. We no longer have to live up to any standard of living of our harsh lifestyles in order to prove ourselves to God that we're in relationship, thank God. God, not us, God has chosen to reclaim this world again. And instead of being disappointed in what God created and wipe us out like in the Noah times, God has decided to love us just as we are. Faults and all. And is there anything better than that? <laughs> the resurrection of Jesus is not about appeasing an angry God's wrath upon us humans. Even though we sometimes like to want that. We want that, right? Sometimes. <laughs> But this atonement theology, that's what that theory of why we have the resurrection is called, it just doesn't make much sense to me. But rather, I believe that this act of willing sacrifice and the showcase of the power of God has over death through the resurrection, we are shown that God will do anything to put us back in relationship with God. It has a lot less to do about what we do and a lot more to do with what God does. And that's the good news, isn't it? We are shown that God will do anything to be in relationship with us no matter what we do to God. We will never defeat God's desire to be in relationship with us. And I hope that's what you take away from this sermon today. 
no matter what you do to God, God will never stop trying to love you. God will continue till the end of time to bring us back into the fold of love. Why else die a horrific death? And that there is nothing that we humans can come up with that will stop this movement. I really hope you believe that. I believe that. There is nothing we can do. If anything, I think that's egotistical of us to think that we can do anything to stop God from loving us. Easter is our wake-up call to the reality that we are not in control of God. That no matter how hard we think that we're in control of what we can do to affect God's willingness to love us, we can't. And that's the good news. What Jesus shows us is that God will always be resurrected no matter how many times we try to put God to death. As you know, there are attempts in our governments in the United States, governments abroad, and in the church to stop freedom of thought, freedom of religion, freedom of choice, freedom of life and happiness. There are attempts to silence people for who they love, for where they come from, or what they look like. I know sometimes the Easter message is meant to be this, yay, feel good sermon. (laughs) That's not my style all the time. (laughs) But today, we are given the hope that no matter how hard we try to enforce bigotry, control, prejudice, and hatred, no matter how much we want to be those things and do those things, God will always be there, willing to lay God's self down for those who the world oppresses and hates. Thank God. And then resurrect with them a new world. One that is more loving, more caring, more gentle, more sharing, more free, more liberating. Jesus didn't die as a criminal because he did bad things. Jesus died as a criminal because he spoke out against the crimes of the elite, the powerful, and the wealthy. Not every criminal commits a crime. And through Jesus, we see this reality. And we most importantly see who God is willing to stand with and die with and rise with. It's not the elite. It's not the wealthy. It's not the powerful. It's the oppressed. It's the marginalized. It's the people who are often attacked by the popular people in a country, in a society, in a culture. And the Easter message is conflicting, isn't it? Because it's good news (laughs) if you're on the side of what I just mentioned. But it could be scary news if we're on the side of the popular people. Which is exactly why Jesus died. But here's the thing. The real good news is that God desires relationships so badly, not just in the form of us and God, but in all of us. So if we can live a way in where we put away all of our ideas of of separating us through education, through class, through wealth, through any of that, we can start to build the world that God desires for us. And that God 
actually did die for everyone. Everyone. Christ's sacrifice is a testament to who God loves, which is everyone. Everyone, 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 everyone. I can't say it enough. God died for everyone. Even if we don't want to believe it. <laughs> because there is absolutely nothing we can do to inherit eternal life. Nothing. Nothing. Because through Christ, we see that relationship with God is not earned, it is given. It is a gift, and we say it all the time. Accept the gift. I think we do that with each other, too, sometimes, don't we? We can't accept gifts. We feel like we need to give something back. Well, you know, you gave me this, and I need to, you know, I need to somehow fulfill a, a, a similar deed to you. No, stop it. Accept the gift. Because when we can accept gifts, we can accept the love that we were given. I wish I could say this on every rooftop and every pulpit and stage, that we are not saved by our own works, but by the works of one Jesus Christ. And as Lutherans, we know this. This was the biggest deal ever with Luther. But it's so easy to want to earn salvation. But we didn't. Thank God. That's a lot of pressure. There is nothing we can do to save ourselves. Nothing. So let's stop focusing on what we consider sin. Let's stop trying to get people to stop be sinners. Well, I can't love them the way that I love this person because, you know, they're living in that kind of sin. Or they're living in this type of sin. Or, you know, they can't be fully a member of the church because they're living this way. Stop. We need to stop. Christ died for all. God loves us just as we are, and if we never changed, if we never improved in our ethics or our morals, God will still love us. And I mean that. If we never improved, God would still love us. That doesn't mean God doesn't want us to improve. Don't get me wrong there. But God would still love us. Nothing, nothing we can do can separate us from the love of God. Christ didn't die on the cross and be raised because of our faith in Christ. Christ died because of what God has faith in us. If you were part of the Bible study in the morning, we're learning that about Abraham. He was not a good guy. <laughs> but God had more faith in Abraham than Abraham had in God. God still loved Abraham no matter what he did. And that's the same for us. Sure, we have faults. We do things that hurt relationship. And that is ultimately what sin is, right? Anything that breaks down relationship with God and creation. But we are not defined by our sin anymore. Because Christ is risen. Thank God. This world is a broken place for sure, but it is a wonderful place. And in the midst of suffering, I think we can sometimes forget just how great this world can be. It is both saint and sinner, as us Lutherans proclaim. Hate the sin, love the sinner. I've sure heard you've heard that before. I'd like us to throw that away too. It's just wrong. Because through Christ, God defeated sin. So what's with all this talk of sin? It's no longer good versus evil. It's just a world trying to do its best inside a complex web of historical wounds that is loved, wounds and all, 
by an all-loving God. So let's take this Easter lesson and solidify it in our hearts today. That Christ was resurrected with his wounds intact. We didn't hear it today, but remember when Jesus came and said, touch my wounds. They weren't healed. Christ was resurrected with the sin of the world permanently attached to his holy body. So what does that mean? <laughs> that tells us that our wounds are holy. And what that means is that God loves all of us, our whole selves, every part of us, even the parts that we hate about ourselves. God loves us. And thanks be to God that we have a God who is big enough, strong enough to take the beatings of this world and still find a way to love it. Thank God. And I hope that through Jesus, you can find a way to love this world too. Love yourself, wounds and all. Jesus does. And maybe one day we together can love this world just like Jesus does. Amen. Jesus makes thee.